Hey there, YouTube followers, Michael of Painting War Games. Sorry for the delay in the, this part of uh, the Blood Angels Codex review. Blood Angels. Um, so, we're getting the heavy support. Um, I'm going to call it part one, because I don't think I'm going to get to all of it. But, you never know. Um, so, yeah. We'll just do heavy support. Um, starting off on page 88, it's the Devastator Squad. You get five Space Marines and a Sergeant for 70 points. Not bad. Uh, they're generic Space Marines. Actually, yeah, they're the same points, aren't they? Because they don't come with any upgrades. Not until you give them the guns, at least. So, I'm just flipping back. Yeah, 14 points a model. Cool. Um, they have power armor, so they have 3 plus A. They come with bolt gun, bolt pistol, frag and crack grenades, and the sergeant has the Signum, which, if memory serves me right, it makes one of the shots go up to ballistic skill 5. So, let me just look it up. Signum. Yeah, it's BS5. Uh, declare the Signum being for, uh, being used on that particular hit. Um, oh, wow. If it does so, yeah, one model in the squad goes up to ballistic skill 5. For some reason, I thought the whole squad did. I was like, oh, they changed that. No, you have to, with the Signum, uh, say you're using plasma change. You say, okay, I'm going to roll the first three plasma, if you roll four plasma cans, like I do. Um, you say, I'm going to roll, it gets hot, you know, you do that, and then you say, I'm going to roll the first three of them at their normal ballistic skill. The last one's going to be at BS5. So, um, Special rules, they shall not no fear, combat squad, serious charge. Um, you can add up to five more Marines for 14 points a model. I really say you should, um, because you're going to want, like, five guys in front of your shield, of your gun line, effectively. Like, I'm going to call them wounds. Uh, they're, they're five extra wounds for uh, the four guys. Well, actually, yeah, I'd run five deep and put your sergeant in front of them, too. Um, so that way you have six wounds in front of your guys, with the heavy weapons. So that way they get shot down first instead of, and you you could keep on dishing out the pain. Um, four guys might, uh, may take items from the heavy weapon list. And, um, I have to see how much these things will actually cost now. Okay, heavy weapons. Wow, there's quite a bit of heavy weapons. I, for some reason, I can't remember why. Sorry, guys, it's been a long day. Heavy bolters, 10 points. Um, they can't take heavy flamers, so I'm just not even going to talk about it. Um, multi melt is 10 points. Uh, missile launcher with frag and cracker missiles is 15 points. If you want flak missiles, which is the anti air missiles, it's 15, or it's an additional 10 points. So, missile launcher is 15. The flak missiles is 10. Plasma cannon is 15 points, and LAS cannon is 20 points. Not bad, actually, because I remember plasma cannons being 20 points and LAS cannons being 25, so everything's gone down a little. Um, how I personally, and I'm looking into investing into getting two 10-man Devastator squads, um, how you would do that the most economical way is to buy two Devastator squads and one Tactical Marine squad. Um, with because the Devastator Squad kit, how I would run uh, 20 Devastators, is I run four with Last Cannon and four with Plasma Cannon. And as you guys know, the Devastator Squad only comes with two Plasma Cannons and two Last Cannons. So if you get two Devastator Squad kits and then a Tactical Squad, that will fill out the wounds. Um, you'll get you know, an additional five guys. So you only need three kits to make 20 guys, which is bad, but it's good at the same time. So I would run four last cannons in one squad. Um, well, okay, I'd run either four last cannons or four heavy bolters. Um, I am a big anti, I'm a big uh, high strength weapon guy. Um, hence the plasma cannons. I'll, my bread and butter with Salamanders was I ran a Devastator squad with four plasma cannons and everyone and this was back in fifth edition everyone was like why are you taking plasma cannons I'm like you guys like plasma pistols right they're like yeah and plasma guns are like yeah plasma cannons are even better but and everyone was like well it's a small blast I'm like it eats Marines <laughs> 
plasma cannons, in my opinion, are the best anti-infantry lob weapon out there. Um, plasma in general is just good against cleaning up infantry, uh, particularly, um, shoot, I think plasma is AP too, right? Yeah. So it's good at even taking out, like, Stern Guard, or, uh, Sanguinary Guard. Hell, it would be good, and I don't know the models in there, would be taking out Commander Dante. Be like, oh, I'm going to launch plasma cannons out. Because he's AP2. Or because plasma's AP2. He has a 2 plus A. Who cares? It's strength 7 AP2. It's plasma. It's a small blast. Get used to it. It's great. Every, In my opinion, plasma cannons aren't used enough. Um, and then again, like, I, I would pick... Just because I had the weapons there, I would pick a squad with four LAS cannons. So that way... Um, you could pick out, like, little guys, you'd be like, okay, there's a tank, so I'm going to shoot all my last cannons at it, and you're shooting four last cannons at it a turn, generally you'll kill it, so, um, I mean, last cannons and the plasma cannons can be elite killers, too, like, you know, you go after Terminators, um, heavy, like, uh, Carnifaxes, they're good at killing those, um, you know, they're they're very well utilized. Um, I wouldn't even upgrade the sergeant to a veteran sergeant, because what's the point? Um, I, yeah, you can upgrade him to a veteran sergeant for five points. Why? If you got an extra five points at the end of the day, go ahead. Um, I mean... Like, hey, I got five points I need to spend, you know, cap out even. Go ahead. It's worth it there, I guess. So, yeah, um, you could take, uh, you know, the sergeant can take melee weapons or ranged weapons. Uh, you know, I, I personally wouldn't give them any kit. You, you're dumping your points into the four guys with heavy weapons in this squad, and that's what they're made for. Um... I'm going to try to get this video to speed up a little bit, so i got to close my internet browser behind me. Um, you know, you can take them in a drop pod Rhino Razorback as a designated transport. It's all fun and good. Uh, these, how I ran my Salamander ones, I just sit them behind an Aegis defense line, put the, the sergeant and the five wound guys in front of them, and then I put my plasma cannons or my last cannons behind those guys and just start volley fire. I always try to give them a lane of fire, though. Um, like, you know, uh, a lot of boards I play, they have uh, a no man's lane. I like, and I love my plasma cannons that have access to that no man's lane. Alright, guys. And the video is doing slightly better now, so that's good. Alright, uh, enough talking about plasma cannons and devastator squads. Let's get on to the bell. We're going to do both predators in the same go, I think. No, we'll do the Bale Predator, because it's special, and it's something I've never played with or played against. So, yeah. It comes with twin-linked assault cannon, overdrive engines, which makes it a fast tank, uh, searchlights, and smoke launchers. Um, you may replace the twin-linked assault cannon for the Flamestorm cannon, which the model itself is displayed in the book that way. Flamestorm Cannon is Strength 6 AP3 Heavy 1 uh, Flamer Template. Good Marine Melta, or green or great Space Marine uh, killing, because it's AP3, so they don't get their wounds. Um, you could take um, the sides as Heavy Bolters for 20 points, or Heavy Flamers on the sides. I honestly would probably put Heavy Bolters, because you need some range down, you need some shots down range. So, you know, you get two heavy uh, sponsors, or you get two sponsors with heavy boulders, not bad. And you take uh, items from the Blood Angels vehicle list. It comes out at 115 points, how it sits. Um, I would upgrade it to give it the Flamestorm Cannon, and then i give it the heavy boulders. So you're looking at 135 points. Um, that way you have some mobility and you have some range. Um, you know, because you just don't want to be getting shot up, because... Bale, if I saw a Bale Predator on the field and I played, it was Blood Angels versus Blood Angels, I'd shoot it down with last cannons before it could get anywhere. Um, so yeah. It's Blessed Skill is 4, Front Armor 13, 
sides uh, 11, rears 10, it has three hill points. I mean, it can't stand up to super heavy fire, but it can withstand fire. The Predator, the oldie but goodie, uh, 75 points, it's same stat line, it's bliss skill 4, front armor 13, side 11, rear 10, three hull points. It is just a regular tank, um, has auto cannon, uh, searchlight smoke launchers, and the auto cannon does what? Auto cannon is 48 inch range, strength 7, AP4, heavy 2. It's a good gun. I have variants, or I had variants with this, my salamander army. Or I actually had two, it came with two heads actually, or two of the turrets, so I could make it a auto cannon or a twin link Goliath cannon. Yeah, you can replace the auto cannon with a twin link Goliath cannon for 25 points. Um, on the sides, you, on the two side sponsors, you could take heavy bolters for 20 points, Goliath cannons for 40. Um, you could, you can actually give this overdrive engines to make it a fast tank for 10 points. And it can take items from the vehicle uh, equipment list. Now, I goofed when I always played my Predator with my Salamators because I was I was big into AP one and two stuff when I first got in the game, not knowing what really was I needed. Then again, when I did get in the game, it was a really heavy tank, so I built my Predators. With side las cannons and twin linked um, las cannon on top, just so I could sh have a lot of las cannons downrange and blowing, trying to blow up uh, land raiders. Because the guy who taught me how to play, that's land raiders were his favorite thing, stuffing them with corn berserkers. That because he was a chaos player. So I, you know, that's how I played then. How I look at it now is I would. I put side heavy bolters on it, um, just because you get the shots. Um, you're getting six shots, if I remember right. Heavy bolter is 36 inch range, strength five, AP four, heavy three. So yeah, um, I don't know. My phone's going off behind me. I would give it side heavy bolters, and it's really a toss up between giving it the las cannon. Or keeping it with the auto cannon. Um, if you stay with the auto cannon, you're not going to have any armor. You're not going to have any anti armor. So I would give it the twin link glass cannon just for that. You know, you're you're going to come across predators and stuff like that. Okay, so next page, Vindicator, uh, page 91. It's 120 points. It's the same stat line. <laughs> Plus the skill four, uh, front armor thirteen, side eleven, rear ten, three hull points, great stuff. Demolisher cannon, which is the bad boy, which I love that thing. I love demolisher cannon. Demolisher cannon, twenty four inch range, strength ten, AP two, ordnance one, large blast. I, I can't say enough. I wish it had thirty six inch range, but twenty four inch range is great. Um, you know, it comes with searchlights and smoke launchers. It can take overdrive engines to make it a fast vehicle for 10 points. Take a seed shield, which is almost all Vindicators are displayed with the sheet. seed shield. Uh, so you can give that for 10 points. Um, and it can take items from the vehicle weapon thing. I This is how I'd make my, my Vindicator. I'd give the sheet shield and I'd put like a, a, a bolter on top of some sort. Let me go back and look at the weapon or the upgrades for that. Uh, vehicle equipment. Um, wow. But yeah, I'd give it a storm bolter for five points, um, and then I'd give it that seed shield um, because I think seed shield doesn't allow it to uh, get bogged down in like uh, terrain type stuff. If I remember right, so I'm gonna look it up, guys. I know you guys hate this. Yeah, it automatic seed shield automatically passes dangerous terrain test. Um, yeah, I I do it. Like it's just standard. I give it a storm bolter for five points. Um, you know, you could give it a hunter killer missile, um, but it's one use only type thing. So I'd give it a storm bolter for five points and then give it the seed shield for ten points. Um, I've never ever seen Vindicators that go faster than six inches and shoot. So maybe it's viable. I don't know, but 
even though the Demolisher Cannon is very short range, it is very deadly because this is an ordnance weapon. So it, if I remember right, you don't need a line of sight to shoot the damn thing. Like, oh, there's a guy up there. Boom! Or maybe that's Barrage. Here. Ordnance, ordnance, ordnance. Ordnance weapons on page 41 or 73. So we're going to go to 73. Just, just quicker. It doesn't tell me here. The line lines, blah, blah, blah. Oh, there it is. Vehicles and ordnance weapons. Unlike units, vehicles can move and fire with ordnance weapons. However, a vehicle that fires an ordnance weapon can only make snapshots with its other weapons that turn. A vehicle that moves at cruising speed can still snapshot ordnance, but of course can only fire ordnance weapons that cannot be fired as snapshots. So it can. Cruising speed is 12 inches, so it moves 6 and it can still shoot it. Um, but I want to see. I think it says 43. Alright. Sorry guys, I'm doing this while you guys are watching me. I don't want ordnance vehicles. Ordnance weapons, 41. Ordnance weapons! Uh... Okay, because I've been very out of practice on ordnance weapons. When shooting an ordnance weapon, um, the number of times indicated by the profile is type. Um, a a non-vehicle model carrying an ordnance weapon cannot fire if it is moved in a shooting phase. Blah blah blah. Ordnance weapons cannot be snapped fired. Furthermore, if a non-vehicle model fires a ordnance weapon, then the the massive recoil of the ordnance weapon means that. The model cannot fire other weapons, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it can't shoot other weapons and it can't assault. Ordnance weapons hit with such a force that the roll of the penetration dice with an ordnance weapon roll two dice instead of one and pick the highest. Wow, I did not know that. Um, so yeah, you do need line of sight. I guess that's barrage what I'm thinking of. So yeah, um, ordnance, really good. Um, this is the beefiest ant tank killer that you potentially have. Of course, you're going to have to sort of mill your way up there. This is, this Vindicators, you guys know, they're an anti-everything gun. <laughs> so, as long as you're within that 24 inch range, you're an anti-everything gun. Alright, yeah, I'm going to continue going. This is going to be a 30 minute thing, because I want to get done with heavy support. So now we're on to the whirlwind. Um, it's on page 92. It's 65 points. Um, its stats are a little bit different. Ballistic skill 4, front armor 11, side armor 11, rear 10, 3 hull points. It has a uh, whirlwind multiple missile launcher, um, searchlights, and smoke launchers. Um, it can upgrade to give it overclocked engines, and it can take weapons, blah, 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 from the thing. So, whirlwinds, I have not... I used to use a whirlwind in Salamander, and I tell you what, they were highly underrated. I love those damn little things. Alright. The Whirlwind Multiple Missile Launcher. Okay, it has two um, different rounds. It has a Vengeance round. It's uh, ranging between 12 and 48. This one is Strength 5, AP4. It has Ordnance 1, Barrage, Large Blast. Um... I think barrage means that you do not have to um, have line of sight. Barrage. 160. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know these rules off the top of my head. Um, yeah, barrage weapons can fire indirectly, which means they can fire at a target that they do not have line of sight on as long as the target is beyond their minimum range if applicable. That's all I need to know. That's good. So, yeah. Strength 5, AP4, Ordnance. Um, I guess it could technically pop, or 
I guess it could kill like speeders. <laughs> you need a six to penetrate, but you then again you do do you get two d six. So yeah. Uh, the next one is incendiary uh, catastrophe. I'm probably butchering that. It's uh, range twelve to forty eight. Strength four, AP five, ordinance one, barrage, ignores cover, large blast. That is your I'm gonna kill the nids in the rough that are in the grass or on the hill or in the ruins. That is the anti infantry something that's sticking in a building to get that cover saved, which makes it better because you this is not an anti marine type weapon. Um, this is anti tyranids, anything that has AP five or six, so you know, if you got guys that are needing a cover save of AP four to live through something, or a cover save of four plus, which most tables have stuff that gets cover save of four plus, um, you know, AP five will just mulch through them, and because it has more cover. So I, the whirlwind is actually really decent in my opinion. It's highly underrated in my opinion. I wish people would take it. I'm probably gonna have to get a couple of these things. Eventually, um, I am looking at possibly having somewhere of four to five thousand points of blood angels when it's all said and done. Not anytime soon, <laughs> um, but yeah. Now we're getting into the land raiders, and I think that's actually it for the heavy support. Yes, the land raiders take up the last of the heavy support slots, which is three on their own because they're three different land raiders. So on page ninety-three, you get your standard land raider. All the Land Raiders, as far as I know, have the same stat line. I'm going to look them up right now. Yeah, all Land Raiders have the exact same stat line, so I'm only going to go through it once. Ballista Skill 4. Front, side, and rear, 14. Best armor in the game as far as tanks go. I think it is the best armor in the game. You can't get above 14 armor. Hole points, 4. Great sauce, yes. Um, this... Um, the regular Land Raider on page 93 has twin linked heavy bolter, two twin linked glass cannons on the sides, searchlight, smoke launchers, special rules, assault vehicle, which I need to know this because it actually uh, will play into um, something I'm going to say. So we're going to go to page 157 first. Uh, passengers disembarking from access points on a vehicle that has a special rule can charge the turn that they do so, even in a turn uh, that the vehicle was destroyed or in the following turn, unless the vehicle has arrived from reserve that time. So you can move, disembark it sounds like. No, passengers disembark in from access points on the vehicle with this special rule can charge on a turn that they do so. So, if you if this has been FAQ'd or something, tell me. I say this thing can move, move its range. They can disembark, but they can't move from there. They can just move, disembark, and charge. That's how I interpret um, assault vehicle. It has power of the machine spirit. I don't know that crazy rule, but we'll I'll figure it out at one point. Actually, here. You guys are going to hate me, aren't you? I know you guys do. It's all right. I can take the heat. You know, when you're as good as me, you're bound to have some haters somewhere. Page 169. Actually, I did have a hater on this channel, and I banned his ass because um, he was saying some very nasty things, and I decided I wasn't going to take it anymore. Power of the Machine and Spirit. In a turn in which the vehicle neither moves flat out nor uses smoke launchers, the vehicle can fire one more weapon at its full ballistic skill than on one permitted. In addition, this weapon can be fired at a different target um, to any other weapons subject to the rules. Okay, so yeah, that's cool. That's an interesting tank there. I'm going to show that picture off. I don't know what that is. Oh, I have the Space Marine Codex. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Power of the Machine Spirit. Um, regular Land Raiders transport capacity is 10. No fire points. Uh, its accent 
or access point is two on the side and one on the front. So yeah, um, it can take a multi multi for ten points, and it can take stuff from the uh, uh, Blood Angels vehicle equipment list. The only upgrade I'd ever give this thing is putting a multi multi on top of it, just to have some extra anti tank killing whatever stuff. But yeah, this thing is good all around. It holds five Terminators, uh, which traditionally Land Raiders are Terminator-esque um, uh, entry points. You know what, guys? I just realized I missed a heavy support choice. And I will get back to it at the end of the Land Raiders. I'm sorry, the, this is the gunship. I just realized, I was like, I didn't talk about the flyer yet. Land Raiders Crusader, 250 points. Uh, they're all, no, they're not all 250 points. Uh, Crusader, same stat line. This one comes with twin link assault cannon, two hurricane bolters, frag assault launchers, smoke uh, launchers, and searchlights. Has assault vehicle, power of the machine spare. This one can hold up to 16 models, and it has the same access points. It can take a multi melt for 10 points and take all the stuff from the Blood Angels vehicle equipment list. This is actually kind of really cool. I think Crusader is another underrated model, um, just because of oh, it's it's got hurricane bolters, which are like how did they describe hurricane bolters? I think it's three twin linked bolt guns. Is how they originally described it. It's been years since I've actually yeah. Hurricane bolters consist of three twin linked bolt guns fired at it as a single weapon. Not bad, considering the bolt gun alone. Um, the bolter is 24-inch range, strength 4, AP5, heavy fire, or rapid fire. I mean, you get two of those things, and... Or you're getting two hurricane bolters. So that's six shots. Potentially 12 if you're within 12-inch range. Not bad. And you get the assault cannon, too. Uh, it's 24-inch range, strength 6, AP4, heavy 4, rending. It's all good stuff. Um, I mean, I would, I, I'm just a fan of Melta, so I'd put a multi on and make it 260 points. Uh, the Crusader, if you're wanting to really launch a lot of Terminators, or say, a lot of guys, um, out of it, because they can hold up to 16 guys, so you could have your Stern Guard squad in this, um, uh, with characters galore, or you could take eight Terminators you know, you could have six, you could have seven Terminators and your Terminator the Lord in that. It's not a bad idea as a deployment issue or deployment thing. Next, we're going on to the Land Raider Redeemer on page 95. Uh, Redeemer is 240 points. Has the same stat line as all the Land Raiders. Uh, it's twin linked uh, assault cannon, two Firestorm cannons, one on each side. Really cool stuff. Uh, frag assault launchers, searchlights, smoke launchers, assault vehicle, power of the machine, spirit. This one can take up to 12 guys, um, and it, you know, has access points, two on the side, or one on each side and one up front. Um, you can take a multi melt for 10 points and blood angel vehicle weapons, less stuff. This one, I actually, it has modeled with a multi melt and this is the one that I almost would this is the one I have to take a multi melt on. The other two, I could go and give it a pass. This one you have to because you need something with range. Other than that, assault cannon. Um, 12. So you could get six Terminators. You could get a five man Terminator squad and uh, you know your Terminator Lord in there. It's all great. Um, as far as the, the Land Raiders go, they are all equal in their own right. Um, it's hard to say which one is better for me, or better in my opinion. I think they're all good. I am really sort of biased towards the regular Land Raider, though. That's because that's the one I played the most. And then there's a Land Raider out of the, um, one of the, um, Forge World books. It's the Land Raider Achilles, um, where it had the Thunderfire Cannon mounted on top of it, or in it, which, those were the two that I, I've always played, um, the Land Raider Achilles had the Thunderfire Cannon on it, and its sponsors were uh, twin-linked multi-meltas. 
So I'd run in my Soundlander list and just start lobbing <laughs> these blasts everywhere. It was really fun to play. I think it was like 375 points, though, and it could only hold like six regular guys, so you couldn't even put Terminators in. But it had Ceramite plating, I think, on it, too, so Melta didn't get its Melta effect. It was just crazy. Um, I forget. It's... I, I can't remember which book it is, but it's two books that it comes out of. It's the book where the Carcardons are. Um, man, I can't think of it. I used to own them, and then I sold them. Gosh, it's a set of, um I cannot think of those books. Um, but, yeah, it's the Carcardons were in it. Um, there's um, it, there, there's stuff on Ford. We'll look for it. If you look up Tybros, the Red Wake, you'll find the book. All right, sorry guys, I'm getting back to the last. I told you this was going to run 30 minutes. It's going to run 35, almost 40, because I'm doing all the heavy support. My computer's freaking out too. It's like, hey, you know, we're jumping up right now. All right. Yeah, I'm in a very good mood today, guys. I have been in a good mood for about the last week and a half, two weeks now. All right, the last but definitely not least, and it's a model I used to own until I sold all my Space Marine stuff. At one point, Storm Raven gunship. I call it the space bus <laughs> because that is what it is. It is a space bus. <laughs> Two hundred points for this thing, or you could call it the flying Rolandrator for all I care. I just call it space bus. Ho! <laughs> um, it's ballistic skill four, front, side, and rear armor twelve, three hole points. It is a Vehicle, flyer, hover, transport. This thing is just great all the way around. I love these things. They're expensive to buy, but I like them. Um, it's a, it comes with twin-linked assault cannon, twin-linked heavy bolter, four storm strike missiles. These things, I only used them once, so I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, storm strike missiles. Um, they're 72 inch range, strength 8, AP 2, heavy 1, concussive, 1 use only. Uh, yeah, d there you go. <laughs> um, comes with ceramite plating, which I believe is the thing that gives it uh, immune to Melta. Ceramite plating, yeah, it, you don't get the extra D6. Oh, uh, yeah, Melta weapons do not roll an extra D6 on penetrating. Uh, when shooting this vehicle at half range or less, yeah, it, it just negates the melter rule. <laughs> and it's an assault vehicle, which is great because I never used it as such. Has power of the machine spirit, never used it that way either, so it is a flying lane raider. Um, it has skies of fury. Um, if the storm, if the gunship has moved more than six inches. Passengers can still disembark, but they must do so as follows. Nominate any point um, over which the Storm Raven moved that turn and deploy the squad as if it were deep striking into that point. If the, if the unit scatters, every, disem, uh, every disembarking model must immediately take a dangerous terrain test. If any of the models cannot be deployed, the entire unit is destroyed. Uh, models that disembark using Skies of Fury rule cannot charge in the turn they do so. So, if it's moving like 12, or if it's moving 7 plus more inches, they can't charge out of this thing. Uh, transport capacity, um, the gunship can take two separate units. One unit um, of up to 12 models in the cabin, plus a single dreadnought of any type. On its rear grapplers, if a zooming dreadnought is wrecked or suffers a crash and burn, um, result in disembarking dreadnought suffers a strength 10 on its rear armor. If the gunship is hovering, it suffers a strength 4 instead. The, uh, the gunship can carry jump infantry models. It has no fire points. Um, it has an access point on the front, one on either side, and one at the rear. The upgrades for this bad boy may replace the twin-linked assault cannon with a twin-linked plasma cannon for free or a twin-linked lias cannon for free. 
may replace the heavy bolter for one of the following. Um, Twinlink multi melter for free or Typhoon Missile Launcher for 25 points. Typhoon Missile Launcher does this. It's frag missile. It's 48 inch range. Strength 4 AP6 heavy 2 blast. It's crack missile. It's 48 inch range. Strength 8 AP3 heavy 2. Not bad. Um, it can replace its two side um, access points with uh, hurricane bolters for 30 points, and it may take any of the following searchlights, extra armor, locator beacon. Searchlight is one point, extra armor is five, locator beacon is ten. I'm going to tell you guys how I had mine, and you guys can argue to say whether it's good or not. I gave it to Multi Melta because it was a free upgrade. I gave it to Plasma Cannon, which was a free upgrade, and I gave it uh, uh, hurricane bolters. Um, so it was 230 points. Now, granted, I played it really bad, and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I thought it was just a cool model. Looking back at it, I wouldn't give it to Hurricane Bolters. I'd give it Twin Link Plasma Cannon and Twin Link Multi Melter. Done. Because this is a delivery system. I'm delivering up to 12 models. I'm delivering um, Sanguinary Guard, Death Company, six Terminators. Hell, you are delivering... 12 models plus a Dreadnought. So you could take 12 Death Company and take the Death Company Dreadnought and just dump them and just start shredding crap. And as you guys know, I have not yet done anything with this guy. I've just been working on Sanguinary Guard and Lord Mephiston, which he's on the display case already. Wow, that was a rant. So, my choice is for heavy support. Since I am going to use the Force Org chart, I can only take three. Um, man, this is hard. Because there's a lot of good choices. Um, and it really depends on what you're going against, I guess is what I should say. Um, the heavy support choice, like, there's one I wish was in here, which is the Thunderfire Cannon. I wish that damn little thing was in here. Um, Devastator Squads, they're always good. Like, the Devastator Squad is great. I like them. It's just... You know, I, I think plasma cannons like I've ranted on are underrated. I give like I'm I'm actually going to build two Devastator squads, one with plasma cannons and one with Lias cannons. Um, and that's gonna be my two heavy support choices until I get into this armor stuff. Um, Storm Raven gunship, I like it. I like it on paper. I've never seen one perform really well. I've never seen them get their points back. Um, I got halfway up with my points once. I got 100 points out of it, um, but it's just, because you're going to have 200 points in that, you're probably going to have an extra 200 points in guys, and 200 points in a Dreadnought, or like 150 points, so you're going to say you're going to have like close to 500 points stuffed into this thing, and you're, in my opinion, you're just not getting the points back out of it. Yeah, sure, it's a delivery system. I think these things are really good in high points games, like, but in low points games, like I'm saying low points is 2,500 or below. I think at the 2,500 plus mark, yeah, I think 2,500 is really the cap for these. And I, as a personal thing, I would not put one of these in unless I was at 2,500 points. But man, like that is the, I, I think these things are made for Apocalypse. Like they, I think they do really great in Apocalypse if you don't get shot down by uh, volcano cannon uh, or storm shadow. Bale Predator, it's good. It's not what I like. Um, I did. I get that it is the Blood Angels tank that they made and all that. I think the Predator is superior to it in every way. I have been kicking around an idea of running three Vindicators instead of taking uh, Devastators. Um, because I think there is a formation of three Vindicators in the Apocalypse book. Two. Which gives them Ballista Skill 5. So, yeah. Um, I've been kicking around that idea in my head. I think it will work. Um, then again, I think two Vindicators and a Devastator Squad of Plasma Cannons or a Devastator Squad of Vlaz Cannons would work, work really well. Whirlwind, if you can, hey man, it, it's good. I would take one. I think I'm probably going to get three of them. I just haven't ever priced them out yet. Land Raiders, Land Raiders are good. Um, I think they're really expensive for the point costs. Well, I think they're really expensive if 
they're all, I'm going to group them in with that storm rate. Um, you need to get your points out of these things. Like, whatever unit you decide to throw in there, they need to get their points plus the Land Raiders points back in cost. So, it's it's going to be a chore. I've seen Predators, just like Laz Predators, and Whirlwinds. Whirlwinds could easily get their points back by just nuking a squad off the field. Uh, Vindicators, I've gotten my points back on them. Devastator squads, I've gotten my points back out of them. It's, it's all about getting your points out of it and trying to get as many extra points. Because I feel that a unit, like particularly my Sanguinary Guard and my Death Company, when I'm feeling them, they are going after something, or they're going to kill stuff that they can kill, but they're trying to get their points back. So that's how I see it. Particularly for the Elite and the Heavy section. Um, so next we are going to talk about next... Uh, Thing will be the Lords of War, the one formation in this book, which is a crazy formation, and um, I'll do the uh, what is it, the Warlord chart, uh, the Warlord traits. So, sorry guys, I knew this was going to take long. I just I wanted to crank it out and get it done. So, all right guys, this is Michael Payne Organs. I'm signing out. And as always, keep gaming.